Hey guys, Ms. Peterson here, and welcome to AP Chemistry Lecture 5-4, where we're going to be talking about half-lives. Um, this is uh, from the integrated rate laws, kind of that next step. Uh, you can find more information in your textbook, sections 14.4, and it's AP Chemistry Topics 5.3, Concentration Changes Over Time. So, what is half-life? It, it's exactly what it sounds like. Half-life is just the amount of time for half of one of the reactants to disappear. The most common application of this is seen in radioactive decay. Uh, this is carbon-14 dating, which you might have heard of. Um, doctors also use the um, decomposition of an isotope of iodine to track the pathways of blood in the body, uh, and it's just a really reliable way to track and figure out things. Um, and again, it's just the time for half of it to decay. However, this is related to the order of the reaction, okay? So we're gonna actually go through and derive the half-life equations from the integrated rate laws, okay? So if we're looking for the concentration at the half-life, I'm gonna use time one half for that. The definition of the half-life is the time for half of it to decay. So that's always going to be one half the initial concentration. And that's what we're gonna be subbing in to our derivations. So for zero order reactions at time t, get the half-life, we know we're gonna have half of the initial concentration and then we just have that initial concentration equals negative K and T being the half-life. So if we have one half of A naught minus A naught, that gives us negative one half of that initial concentration being equal negative KT, okay? Then we can cancel out those negative signs okay? and divide by K on both sides, and we get that the concentration of A naught over 2K equals the half-life, okay? So that half-life equation, just rewrite it the opposite direction, is equal to the initial concentration divided by 2 times that rate constant K, okay? So, as a reaction progresses and that concentration of A0 decreases, the half-life is also going to in decrease. That means that going from 100% of it to 50% of it is going to take a um, longer amount of time than going from 50% of it to 25%. That change is going to happen faster because that concentration is lower, so the time will be lower. The half-life decreases with that decreasing concentration. Okay? Okay, cool. Let's look at it for first-order reactions. This is the one that you're going to see come up the most in AP Chemistry, and it's the only half-life equation that's actually on your equation sheet. So, again, I'm going to write this as the natural log of one half of our initial concentration minus the natural log of that initial concentration equals negative kt. Now for this we do need to remember some of our rules of natural logs which is that subtraction is like that division when we separate it out. So by reorganizing this a little bit we get that the natural log of one half of a naught over A equals negative KT, okay? And that's kind of a little bit of a weird notation, so I'm just going to put that two down there on the bottom, okay? So you can see there that we have the natural log of one half being equal to negative KT. Ooh, we get our calculator out. And if you actually plug in the natural log of one half, you get 
negative 0 0.693, okay? And those a naughts canceled out of the equation. That means that the half-life is constant, okay? The half-life is constant. It doesn't depend on, it's already written right there, okay? It doesn't depend on the concentration. So whether you're starting at the 100%, it's gonna take just as long to go from 100% to 50% as it takes for it to go from 50% to 25%, as it takes for it to go from 25% to 12.5%, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So we have that equals negative kt. Oh, and these are all the half-life, the time for the half-life. Divide it out. And we get that the half-life is equal to 0 0.693 divided by that rate constant k. And like I said, this is the only one that's on your equation sheet. It is the one that's going to come up most often. Okay. This is actually another characteristic of a first order reaction, that constant half-life, a very easy and straightforward trend to see in the data. Second orders, you won't see as much, but let's go ahead and go through and derive that anyways. We have one over one half of that concentration of A naught minus one half that original concentration equals KT. Let's rewrite this a little prettier. One over one half is basically two over that concentration of A naught. So then we have two minus one over that A naught, which is one over that initial concentration equals KT, with that time being the half-life, divide by K, divide by K, and we get one over the concentration of A naught times K equals that half-life, okay? So the half-life is one over, normally I think you'll see it written as K times that concentration. What's interesting here is that you can see there is an opposite relationship between zero order and second order. In zero order, the half-life got shorter with that decreasing concentration, but in the second order reaction, the length of the half-life actually increases with that decreasing concentration. That means that it's going to take um, a longer amount of time for it to go from 50 to 25% than it would take to go from that 100 to 50%, okay? Each decay, it's gonna take longer for half of it to decay, okay? And again, this one right here is going to be the one that we'll see most often, and it can only be used for first order reactions, okay? The half-life equation on your equation sheet can only be used for first order reactions. Okay, so those are our half-life equations. Let's go ahead and do some practice and see how to apply these. So in this first one, we have a graph of concentration versus time. At first glance, we might not be able to determine of the order, but it's not a straight line. So we know it is definitely not zero order. Okay. Now, luckily, this one started with an initial concentration. Um, it's Q, so I'm gonna go Q naught of one molar. So if we wanna know its half-life, we just need to see when it gets down to 0.5 molar. And that happens at time of three seconds, okay? Now, if we were looking at this and we were trying to determine the order, we want to look at that, we want to look at that second half-life and see if that is also three seconds. So to go from five seconds, okay, that was the first half-life, to 2.5, that would be the second half-life. If we go over there, and what do you know, that's it, six seconds, another three seconds later. That gives us our clue that this is a first order reaction. Okay, number three says, what is the molar concentration after a second half-life? Well, after the first, it goes down to half of its original, so 0.5. 
After the second half-life, it'll go down to half of that 0.5. So 0.25 molar, okay? And after that second half-life, when it's down um, to 50% of that 50%, that's 75% of it that has decayed. So that is after, oh, I just realized I made an error somewhere. Did you guys catch it? My x-axis is in minutes. So this is six minutes, and this one up here should have said three minutes, not three seconds. Always double check your axis labels. Okay, let's try another one. A certain first order reaction, okay. First order reaction, that means that we can use the equation on our equation sheet, which is that the half-life is equal to 0 0.693 over K, okay? And the half-life is given to us as 20 minutes. So we just plug it in to the formula to solve for K. We're gonna end up with K equals 0 0.693 divided by 20.0 minutes, okay? Again, just doing the algebra to reorganize this to solve for K. And then, we plug it into our calculator and we get a value of 0 0.03465, so I'm just going to say 346 minutes to the minus 1, okay? Because minutes are on the bottom, that will be our units of our rate constant, okay? And again, I'm just checking, yep, 0.693. So how much time is required for this reaction to be 75% complete? Now, there are two ways you could kind of go about approaching this problem. There is the exponential decay equation, which you guys might have seen before in math class. Um, it looks something like the concentration of A equals the concentration of A naught times one half and then time divided by the half-life, okay, or the number of half-lives go up there. And that totally works. The way that I tend to do it is I tend to do it by just doing a quick chart. So if you do a chart, we have number of half-lives, okay? And then I would do the time and the percent remaining, okay? So at zero, at time zero, we know we have 100%. After one half-life, which is 20 minutes, okay, I know I'm going to be down to 50%. After two half-lives, which is 40 minutes, I know I'm going to be down to 25% remaining. Okay, three half-lives, that'll be 60 minutes, and that'll be 12.5% remaining, et cetera, et cetera. So that reaction is 75% complete, when 75% of it is reacted. So that'll be after 40.0 minutes, AKA two half-lives. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Let's do one more example problem. So in this one, we're given a data table for substance A decomposing. And it asks, what order is this decomposition and how do you know? Now, we could go ahead and figure out the natural log of A and the one over the concentration of A and see which of those graphs would be linear. That is a totally valid way to figure out the order. But there's a shortcut way now that we know about the constant half-lives. We can see here that the concentration decreases by a half after every five minutes, okay, that it has a constant half-life. That tells us that this is first order because it has a constant half-life, aka even though the concentration decreases, the half-life is remaining the same, meaning that the um, concentration doesn't affect the half-life, which is only characteristic of first order reactions. And the time that it takes for half of it to decay is five minutes. So 
in order to determine K for a first order reaction. We can use the equation from the equation sheet. Okay. And then we need to um, plug in our half-life and solve for K. So K will be 693 over our half-life, which is 5 minutes, which gives us... Okay, 0 0.139 minutes to the minus 1. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Now, what will the concentration of A be at time 20 minutes? There are actually two ways to solve this, and I'm going to go ahead and show you both of them. The first one is using the half-life. Okay. So at time 15, it was at 19 molar. So at time 20, one more half-life is passed. So it'll be one half of that 0 0.19, which gives us 0 0.85. 0 0.095, sorry. Okay. So the other method is to actually, now that we know that it's a first order reaction, we can use our integrated rate law, which our integrated rate law equation is that the, for a first order, the natural log of the concentration of A at time 20 minutes minus the natural log of the initial concentration equals negative KT. Now we can plug in our values natural log of the concentration of A at time 20 minus the natural log of its initial concentration, which is 1.52, equals negative K, 0 0.139, should put in my units here, times, uh, we said 20 minutes, okay, and then we algebra negative 0.139 times 20, Okay, so then we have natural log of the concentration of A times 20 minus natural log of 1.52 molar equals negative 2.78. Okay, oh, actually, I'm going to plug in the natural log of that 1.52, so we have that, which is 0 0.4187. Okay, carrying some extra sig figs there. And then we add it to both sides. The half reaction method is a little easier, right? So negative 2.78 plus that answer gives us negative 2.361. Um, and it's kind of hard to track the units in here, so I'm just going to add them back in at the end. It's concentration. And then we take E to that power and we get a concentration of A of 0 0.094, okay? So there is a slightly different answer with those two methods, but it is probably just due to some rounding issues and it is totally fine. And that's half-lives. Okay, cool. Okay, cool.